G'day YouTube and welcome back to the ASX Portfolio channel. My name is Jonathan Seguin. So today we're going to be talking about Brownian motion, specifically with regards to financial math. Now it's a really important topic because this is really the building blocks of all the stochastic processes, stochastic calculus that you find in financial mathematics. It's the base of Edo integrals and it's extremely important to understand. So here we're going to be delving into the math. In further videos we are going to be going through geometric Brownian motion, uh, its applications and Edo integrals. So hit the subscribe button um, if you want to stay tuned for that. So I'm going to be running through this uh, Jupyter notebook that I've put together so we can explain uh, what Brownian motion is and how it comes about. So let's jump in. We're going to consider symmetric random walk and then scaled random walk and how that can converge upon Brownian motion. We're going to be using notation and examples from Stephen Shree's book Stochastic Calculus for Finance 2. Um, and it's really important to understand that the main properties of Brownian motion is that it's a martingale. Um, so the expectation is only based on the position of the particle um, or the stock price right now. So that's extremely important. It's a Markov process. And the other consideration is that it accumulates quadratic variation. Now, quadratic variation is really unique to, to stochastic calculus and this is probably how it's most different um, to ordinary calculus. So quadratic variation, we'll be going through what that is here in this episode. So if you want to follow through with the code, I've got it on my website. Here I'm just importing some dependencies that we're going to need. Now Brownian motion is a stochastic process. So we're going to pretend that, um, or we're gonna consider a filtered probability space um, with outcomes and filtration F and a probability space P. So here we have um, from the interval zero to time big T, we've got a set of outcomes, uh, real outcomes. So here a Brownian motion always has um, an initial value of zero, we have independent increments, um, it has a Gaussian and normal distribution on those increments, and it has continuous sample paths. So almost surely, we're going to explain all those properties here. So let's start off with the most simple example that we can have, a symmetric random walk. So if you haven't come across what a random walk is, that's okay. Um, picture that we have a successive coin being tossed. So I've got this by omega. So where each of these omega values is either a heads or a tails. Now the omega nth, nth outcome is the nth outcome of that toss. So this is going to be represented by this xj variable. So it's going to take on one if our outcome is a head and it's going to take on minus one if an outcome is a tail. So if we define a process now with m0 equal to zero, so mk is just going to be the summation along all those possible coin toss paths and that's going to hold for k tosses. So this is really interesting. So we have a random walk and it can either go up one or down one. And we're just going to summate the, um, that over the paths. So here I've written a bit of a script um, where we have a number of simulations. So we've got 10 sample paths and we've got time 10. So we're gonna consider this as years. So random walk, we can either take a negative one or a one. Uh, you can look here and see how I'm doing the math, but um, or using NumPy to be able to create these, these functions. But here, it's probably best just to look at the plot. So for the random walk, um, we can see 10 different paths over a time horizon of 10 years, and we're either going up by one or down by one each time step along those paths. Now, this is really interesting. So we have some cool properties here. The first one that we need to talk about is that these, in, that these increments are independent. And what I mean by that, if you picture these time periods, so um, zero from time period zero all the way through to Km, well then these increments Mk1 minus Mk0 and then Mk2 minus Mk1, all these increments between time periods are in fact independent. Now the expectation of those independent increments is zero and the variance is actually uh, the difference in time or here the distance, so ki plus one minus ki. So that is extremely interesting. So variance accumulates at a rate one per unit time. The other important consideration um, is that this is a martingale. So the conditional expectation 
um, of a fair valued coin of a symmetric random walk um, has uh, the next value in the secret is it's in the sequence is the current position. So that's really important. So a martingale just means that the expectation uh, the conditional expectation um, of the next value is where we are right now. So here if you can picture that we have time from 0 to t and we've got k less than l. So here this expectation um, given this filtration k at time k is the conditional expectation based on all the information up to time k. So this is really important. This is the filtration um, and, it's the, and this is to do with the sigma algebra of all the information corresponding to um, at time t k coin tosses. So this filtration holds all the information up to time k. So given all the information up to time k, what is the expectation of ml? Well, we can, um, ver we can show it like this. The expectation is the increment that we're taking. So we're going from k to l. So that is ml minus mk plus mk given that filtration. Now, if we separate these two terms, we can break out the expectation by parts like this, and we can see here that we end up with now the increment, and we end up with the expectation of just the mk value. Now that expectation is just mk, so we're left with that here on the right hand side. And you can see here that now we have the expectation of the increment. Now because these are independent, and remember we just showed that the expectation is zero. So we can see that the conditional expectation, given all the information to write now, is in fact the value of where we are at time k. So that's really important. So martingale property for a random walk. Now, a very unique part of this in stochastic calculus is this thing called quadratic variation. Now, this is computed path by path, one increment at a time. Um, and it follows this notation here. So the quadratic variation of m with respect to m over k time steps, what we're doing is we're taking the independent time steps and we're squaring them. And we're going to summate that over all the time steps on that path by path basis. What you find is that the actual increment is the um, distance between those time between those steps and here we're considering time so the actual summation or the quadratic variation over each path is equal to k so to actually prove that we're going to show that over our 10 sample paths here we're going to create a function called quadratic variation and um, a variance function so I'm just using a bit of math using the lambda function to be able to summate the squares um, across all those time steps using NumPy arrays. And I'm going to do the same thing for variance except use NumPy um, variance to be able to calculate the variance along not the sample paths but at a slice in time. So for each individual path, I've only printed out four here, but you can see that the, quadra the quadratic variation is actually equal to 10 for all these different paths. Now remember, that's the actual time period that we're stepping forward to, so the distance there. Here, variance is h of the path. Now remember, this is at a specific time period. Now here I've done 10 million simulations, so we can get a good estimate of that distribution. That's actually equal to the time step that we're at. So the first time step, one is one. Second time step, the variance is two, and so forth. You can see that it's not exactly, because here, again, we're, sa we're, we're sampling this distribution. So as this approaches um, n approaches infinity, then you will get convergence here. Now we're gonna consider a scaled symmetric random walk, so a bit of a variation. So to approximate a Brownian motion, we can speed up time and scale down the time step. So what do I mean by that? I mean that for each time step, so here we've got 10 years, what we can do is we can actually take 10 increments in that for each year. So then you can see that we'll have 100 different time steps in our calculation. Here we're still gonna take 10 simulations. So again, the actual um, Python is very similar. But you can see here that perhaps this is more representative of the path intra inter year. So here we're showing that the scaled time step 
um, is just more granular in terms of its movement than the random walk. So still it holds the same properties, so variance um, at a particular point um, along all those paths are equal to the time period and the quadratic variation along those paths now take in 100 time steps but still 10 years is 10. So that holds true. Now let's think of this as term, in terms of the limit of the binomial distribution. Remember, so we've got an up and a down. If we go up, if we get a heads, then we go up by one. If we go um, down, then we go down by minus one. But of course that is now scaled with whatever n we are using. So as n increases, the binomial distribution converges to the normal distribution with variance t. And we're gonna show that here. So if you think about this in terms of the binomial distribution, we can actually look at the possible permutations that these values take on, given the amount of um, time steps that we're gonna take through. So here we can use the combinations formula to work out what the binomial um, probability is for each outcome. And so here, uh, the combinations formula is, using, is determining what the coefficient is for each outcome. And we can work that out here with all the permutations. Here I'm using a lambda function um, to actually get um, each of these probabilistic outcomes and I'm just graphing them in a histogram. The other thing that I'm actually plotting is the normal distribution, which is this black line here. Now what you're gonna see is that as I increase n, um, the granularity of this scaled time step, then this bar chart is going to converge upon this normal distribution. So if I make that 100, or let's go 25, then you can see we're starting to converge towards this normal distribution. If we make that 100, scaled time step, takes longer to compute, but we start really converging to that normal distribution um, with a variance of t. So that's very important. So now that we've considered this convergence, what we're saying is that, and this can be proved, that as we take the limit n goes to infinity, what we get is a normal distribution um, with the expectation of zero with a variance of, of t. So here, um, again, Brownian motion is this stochastic process where this is the case. So we're going to sample from the normal distribution um, with variance t, noting again the expectation is zero with a variance of the actual time, um, time difference at that particular time. So let's consider a number of simulations, 10 again, uh, 10 years and 100, time, uh, 100 steps. So here we're gonna have to calculate the time step each time. We're gonna use the random normal to be able to sample this process and we're going to sum the accumulations. So here you can see now that we have, we've only sampled um, 100 time steps and we could sample as many as we want to approximate this process. And that's what we're going to have to do to consider the variance. But here, this is straight Brownian motion. It's non-differentiable at each time period, um, which is an extremely important um, case and stochastic in nature. So, Let's look at the quadratic variation. Now here we've had to take, let's picture that we had one, uh, that we sampled one million time steps in between these 10 years. So we sampled one million time steps. Now we have to do this so we can converge upon the quadratic variation as n goes to infinity. So the true quadratic variation, as we saw for the random walk and the scale random walk is exactly 10. Um, for the Brownian motion. But I've had to show this by actually showing a very large number in time steps. And you can see that it is approximately 10. So true Brownian motion has a quadratic variation that's equal to that time. So now the variance along these paths, so I've taken 100,000 simulations and you can see that the variance along this path is equal to the time period at that particular point. Now, so the first time step is um, one tenth of one year, and then we've got two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, etc. So hopefully that's very clear. So Brownian motion, um, in summary, 
has these properties. We've got independent increments, it's Gaussian in nature, and it has continuous sample parts almost surely. So Brownian motion actually composes the basic building blocks for stochastic calculus that we're going to need for financial math. So hopefully that's helped your understanding of what Brownian motion is, how you can actually sample Brownian motion um, using this code on my website, and this is going to form the basis of our next video. So thank you very much for listening. So if you're interested in the next video, we're actually gonna learn how we can um, create geometric Brownian motion samples uh, using Python. So stick around for the next video and I look forward to seeing you then.